Justin. Thank you. <laughs> Yay! Okay. Hi, everybody. Sorry for the tech delay. I, uh... I got my computer back. If you've been watching the last few weeks, I've been like sulking in George's office because I had no computer for a while. But my computer is back and and properly freaking out. But we're we're live. We're going. So welcome to this week's learning space. Thanks for hanging in there with us. Um, if, remember, if you are watching, if you want, could share the uh, the YouTube link where you're watching right now. Uh, since we did have to switch over from the old YouTube link to the new YouTube link. So if you can share that out, that would be very helpful. So thanks for coming. My name is, is Nicole Gallucci. I need to change my lower third. Uh, <laughs> and in the office next door is my colleague, Georgia. Yep. Hi, everybody. Hi. So we're glad to be here. And we are here with Stephen Canvin from Moonbot. So hi, Stephen. Hi. Hi. Welcome. <laughs> welcome to our, our, our Mad Mad show. <laughs> So Thank we, you. <laughs> Thanks for having me. So we wanted to talk a little bit about Moonbots, this really cool project getting kids involved in in engineering design. So um, give us a, give us an overview of of the Moonbots project. Right. So <clears throat> the Moonbots project is an educational outreach program um, as an offset from the Google Lunar X Prize mm -hmm. uh, created together mm -hmm. with uh, the X Prize Foundation or by the X Prize. Foundation, um, where we're targeting children or students uh, from age 9 to 17 all over the world to form teams and design, uh, conceive, build and program robots uh, to emulate the Google Lunar X Prize. Um, so the name Moonbots, of course, is like a derivative. It's all about, you know, moon exploration. Um, and when I say students, it could be, you know, you could do it like in classrooms, you could do it out of school, scouts, whomever um, can actually join and, and, and participate. Very cool. And the Google Lunar X Prize, uh, for those who don't know, uh, is a, uh, an international uh, competition for teams to put a privately funded rover on the moon. Uh, that's a $30 million uh, prize purse to be one from. So we tried to emulate that and we have like incentivized, we have a prize too for, for the kids to win, <laughs> or prizes. Yeah, so um, our, our colleague Pamela Gay hosts the Google Lunar X Prize Hangout, uh, which happens every two weeks, so you guys can hear from yeah. the, the adult mm -hmm. teams who are, are working to put uh, robots on the moon. But this, uh, this, this kids aspect yeah. is really cool. How um, so this the Google Lunar X Prize is, is a multi-year process. How do you uh, kind of emulate yeah. that over the? Do you do a different contest every year? Um, how does that work? How does that emulate the the main challenge? Well, so we've been we've been doing four years. We started in two thousand ten and had a uh, we had a hiatus in two thousand thirteen, um, but the. The, the, general, the general idea is to emulate uh, what the Google Lunar X Prize is about, trying to, to have some of the same milestones of making your robot do the same thing uh, just with toy robots. We've been using Lego Mindstorms uh, robots uh, so far, so kids have been you know, asked to, to learn to program it, design, come up with this. But we have made variances in the different years where We've been asking one year to, to uh, focus heavily on showing us the sign before they moved on and could I just move from face to face. We've got two faces. Um, but it's been, it's pretty much been the same concept that you're emulating a lunar uh, mission with a robot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what kind of challenges do the, do the students have to do? What, are they, what does their machine have to do? <clears throat> Well, as an example, for the first phase, to be like el eligible to be in, go into the final phase, we've got phase one, phase two. Um, in phase one, we're asking them to, like from, from this year, we ask them to uh, create a video and answer the question, which is also the, the general question for um, the Google and X Prize. Why should we go back the, to the moon for good? Mm -hmm. um, and we've given them... Uh, all the possibilities to be creative and come up with their own ideas of how to do it. They can create animations, they can do, they can sing, whatever they want to do. They can express and answer the question in a three-minute video. Um, 
and from that we're judging you know who makes the best video and, and stuff like that but they're also doing outreach uh, where they're going out in public and talking about it um, some of the teams that we, we, we see here uh, are I wouldn't say professionals but veteran teams they've been uh, participating in other uh, robotics competitions before so many of them know uh, how to do it uh, they have the experience but we also encouraging teams that haven't had any experience with robots or anything like that mm -hmm. to get into the whole process of playing around with robots learning about STEM science technology engineering and math uh, programming robots because a lot of uh, young people out there haven't tried that before mm -hmm. uh, and also to get into the whole understanding of what it takes to go to the moon and to explore space that's great. So if you have a team that's really new and they're new to robotics, are there any um, guidelines or resources where they can go to and, and get started to get into the competition? Abs absolutely. Well, we, you know, through our website, uh, moonbots.org, we've been trying to give them resources, we've been giving them inspiration. There are tons of videos made by uh, former teams from, from past years. Um, as administrator, we would we would answer emails or calls where people are asking about help. Uh, that we have a, a an extensive rule set, um, but as it is, we we have been trying to work on the rules to make it even more open and creative year by year. For you know, the first year we were like kind of dictating, saying you should make a play field based on the materials that we sent to you. We usually make a play field, you have to do this, this, and this, with this kind of scoring. This year we gave it, we made it, we blew it open and said, make your own game design. You figure out what you want to make as a mission, but we have a few things we want you to do, like get a robot to go off a landing platform like it ha would happen on the moon. Yeah. Um, and to have a few mission items that we have dictated, but the rest is open. If mm -hmm. they want to make a theme, if they want to, to um, they can't change it to be Mars, for instance. But of course, it's it's all about the moon. Uh, but we we try to make it as open as possible, but also to give them their own scoring system, saying, if you can make it up to 100 points, tell us what are the criteria. So we made it quite open, instead of trying to make it too esoteric for the kids. So 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 rookie teams would have a harder time, and we 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 are really trying to lower the bar on the entry level to make it as easy and as accessible as possible. So I just wanted to, um, since I missed this in my intro, if you guys are watching and you want to leave a comment or question, be sure to use the Q&A app it's over here in your window. Uh, there's a little, I think it's here in your window, a little button. Um, you can join us uh, and give us your feedback and questions. So we have a uh, hello from Guido who passes on a hello from Nancy, who's at her work Christmas party, and, and Michael Jobin, and a couple of our other regulars are in. So hello and welcome, and please be, feel free to send in your questions as we go along. Um, so there was some excitement in the comments just now, actually, as several of the viewers noticed that you guys partnered with LEGO. Can you tell us about the um, what LEGO brings to the Moonbots Challenge? Some people are... Right. Well, the, the, the background story is that... Um, actually initiated the competition together with, with people from, from XPRIZE. When I worked at LEGO, I worked at a LEGO company for the longest time. Um, I was the marketing manager for LEGO Mindstorms, uh, the robotics toolkit that LEGO produces. Um, I left the company last year, but I've been part of the competition uh, throughout since the inception in 2000. We started in 2009, but launched in 2010. Um, but the contribution was that, that we were using... Lego Mindstorms uh, robotics kits uh, for the actual robot design for the finalist. We decided that it would be like 20 or 25 teams uh, that would make it into the phase two. And from there on, they had to create uh, the robot. Um, and again, they were free to design it how they wanted it uh, to, to design it, but we gave them the materials to do it. So it was like technically no cost associated with that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's like part of the background story, um, and Lego Mindstorms is, is a wonderful tool to emulate, uh, of course, uh, anything robotic. Uh, but in in when it comes to to the lunar mission, it's been been particularly uh, helpful. Uh, first year we had a totally Lego landscape. It was all Lego plates, building plates, and everything was built out of Lego. 
Um, and again, we opened up to make that even a little more easy. In, we had in 2012, we opened up and said, build it out of anything you want. If you want to make it out of sand or mm -hmm. cement, do that. Uh, but you still you will still get the Lego Mindstorms uh, robotics kit to build your robot from. Um, so again, we, we want to give them as much freedom as possible. And we do love to see rookie teams who have like zero experience with <laughs> going into the deeper, uh, into space exploration and stuff. So they're learning a lot, which is really, really great. Yeah. Yeah, we what just have Oh, go ahead. I was just saying, what about the makeup of the teams? Um, what kinds of teams do you have? If there's a range of age, or do you have more kids um, that that are older participating versus younger, or are some of the groups actually mixed? And I'm just wondering if maybe that sometimes tends to work better versus a, a group of all people in the same age, or maybe not. So, just what kinds do you have? <clears throat> yeah. So. Um... We have a really good mix uh, age-wise. The age bracket is 9 to 17. Uh, mm -hmm. They have to have a team captain age 18 and, and, and over. And mm -hmm. you know, it could be an 18-year-old, but usually it's, it's an adult mm -hmm. or a parent uh, of the team. Um, and as I said, we experience that we, we do see a lot of veteran teams coming from uh, EG First Lego League or First Tech Challenge, which is also a first competition, uh, which is all about robots. Um, they, they tend to gravitate to Moonbots because it's an off-season extracurricular uh, activity that they can all join in. But age-wise, um, we do have a really nice mix also in, in a team. It could go from 9 to 17, which is great. Uh, we do encourage the younger teams to, to make it as far as they can. Uh, we are not pushing them, but we, we are really encouraging them because we are seeing a lot of seasoned older uh, teams being very uh, prolific and, and successful. Um, but the, the age mix is, is pretty good. I don't have the stats on me right now, but we have had a really good uh, average. Um, last year, uh, the team was 16, 17-year-olds. Uh, this year, we were traveling with 16, 17-year-olds, and they have a 12-year-old 12, 12 uh, younger brother as part of the team, too. And we have had a team of nearly, well, they were like, I think they were like 12, 13 in 2011. So um, who won, like, who won the prize, the grand prize? Um, so, yeah, there's a really nice mix uh, for sure. I'm, I'm looking at some of the team names. The Incredibots, <laughs> Dalton Brobots. <laughs> And Exit 5 Robotics from New Jersey, that's that's really, I love it. <laughs> that's a really clever <laughs> it's a good. It's a good joke, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Those of you who don't know, I'm from New York, so I make fun of Jersey. Right, yeah, <laughs> uh, it makes sense. I, I know the team. Um, <laughs> the, again, we encourage them to be creative, and again, for rookie teams, there are, there are those teams who have never been in a robotics competition before. Uh, we would encourage a, a family household to gather, uh, you know, to create a team. Uh, the the limit or the minimum is like two team members and a team captain, and the maximum of five team members. Okay. Um, so we do encourage anyone who can, you know, gather a team to do that, um, and also be creative and come up with a name and a logo and stuff. Um, but we do see that we have these experienced teams that come from First Lego League. Of, of course, they have a logo already. They have the T-shirts. They have everything. They've done it many times before. So they, they know what the, the, the game is all about. Um, but, but to your question, Georgia, we are really trying to, to help them as much as we can. Um, so... Yeah, and that's yeah. great because I imagine robots is it's so engaging, it's so fun. But at the same time, we've seen with some of our programs that, um, and sometimes it's the adults more than the kids. They're a little hesitant, you know. They're afraid that maybe they don't know all they need to know about robotics, and and so there's a little um, there's a little hesitance to kind of jump in. Um, so having some good resources for a new team is really helpful. And usually it is the Ab absolutely. more than the kids. Absolutely. The kids are ready yeah. to fit in. <laughs> we, we are trying to take the brunt off of that. Um, 
one criteria we do have is that they 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 cannot remote control the robot because mm. even though the Google One X Prize that the, the the team would of course have full control over the robot they will send to the moon eventually, um, we're trying to give them the the challenge to say well it has to be autonomous once you put it on your play field once you set it in motion to to perform the mission it has to be like working by itself meaning it has to have a lot of programming into it or some programming for sure. Um, but we are definitely trying to to take the brunt of or the burden off and make it easy on them. Um, hence that we've been using Lego Mindstorms to, to start with. Um, a lot of other tools out there, but it, it's it's been a very obvious choice, um, and the, the the kids, the teams love it. Um, they're really into it. Cool. Very cool. Um, do you get a lot of uh, groups that are classes, or are they after school, or are they just friends? Do you know how the, the groups to kind of get started? So, as I just said, that some of the teams are already formed. They've, they've been working together, and they've had parents who've been coaching and mentoring teams uh, for, like, many, many years, where they've get, gotten a new influx of, of, of kids and, you know, brothers and sisters and friends. But, yes... Um, we see that many of the teams, some of the teams are like uh, all siblings, uh, all best friends. Um, we have uh, some rugby teams that are like family teams, where you know the parents are taking the challenge and, and, and gathering you know their children and their friends uh, and trying it out. Um, but it's 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 every, you know it's all over the board uh, when it comes to how they they're composed for sure. Cool. Um, what, so, okay, so talk about yes. the grand prize, because it involves a volcano. Right. I was going to ask you, talk about the prizes. <laughs> we want to know. <laughs> right. Um, there, there. So, over the years, um, when we when we started the competition, we, we, we decided that the grand prize should be kind of a, a winning trip to a, a point of interest. Uh, right, the moon is kind of like, out of Unfortunately. Yeah. Sorry? <laughs> the moon itself is out of the question for a trip. <laughs> the moon, unfortunately, is still out of question. We, now, we're hoping right to now. go there. It's it's not gone by us that it, that would be like a a, a big uh, incentive if we could do that. Um, oh, don't don't make me go there. Um, <laughs> but but the uh, the first year uh, it was a trip to visit the Lego headquarters in Denmark. Um, come to Legoland. We saw a local uh, robotics competition to... Uh, it was actually a team from New Jersey, um, and um, we we had an exciting time. We escalated it the year after. Uh, we went to uh, Florida for the one thing was the opening of the new Legoland Park uh, that happened right there. But we went to Kennedy Space Center and got a very special visit, which was really really great. I I should have brought pictures for that. Uh, we got to go inside the uh, the very large uh, assembly uh, ah, building of the VLA, yeah. and um, we saw two of the decommissioned space shuttles right there being prepared to go to the museums. And for me, that was like, wow, <laughs> awesome! <laughs> um, it was quite an experience. So we, we had a really big uh, uh, boost. We got to meet a, a couple of astronauts too, um, and. So in 2012, the winning prize was the trip to Hawaii. And uh, which we executed last year in March, and yes, we got to to visit uh, volcanoes and stuff. But we have we have pictures from this year's trip uh, that we could possibly show. Um, so is that something you can pull up, Nicole? Yep, I can do that if you just tell me. The one the one I called like Hawaii one. Uh, it's like a luau picture. Yep. Okay, let me get my screen sharing actually working. Let's see how that works. Yep. So here we go. Uh, uh, yeah. So that's uh, that's the team and me and my wife uh, hosting the team and the kids uh, at a luau, um, which was the first time we actually met in person. <laughs> the next picture over would be the uh, Hawaii two right under there. That looks super fun. Up. Yeah. Right. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, well, we met on the big island of Hawaii, which is Hawaii, mm -hmm. and um, where you have the, the 
two, some of the biggest volcanoes in the world, Mount Loa and Mount Kea. Uh, and we went up to Mount Kea, uh, where they have a visitor center for the astronomers who go all the way up to the top to the observatories. Mm -hmm. And we had actually uh, come up with the idea that the kids or the team should try to emulate the real Google Luna X Prize um, in one of the craters, because what you see in the picture is what is called the analog side. And it's the analog side because the area and the terrain and the composition of the, the soil is very much like what you'll see on the moon. Uh, steel rows tested right there. Um, I think only for lunar exploration, not for Mars explorations, but, but definitely that's the place to go to if you want to test your rover. And some of the uh, Google Lunar X Prize teams have been there too. Um, so the idea was, here you go team, uh, here's $50 to buy some, some materials or find whatever you can in, in, in just in scrap, scrap uh, dump, dumpsters. Uh, you want to start diving. Um, build a lunar lander from the Apollo mission we gave them a uh, rover that uh, was one of the prices they actually won, uh, a remote control rover. Okay, actually you can run through GPS, which is really, really cool. Um, but to emulate the, the Google Lunar X Prize, to visit an Apollo site, to go 500 meters um, and and record videos, put a camera rover and just excited about that because we had we had a really good time there. Uh, later on, we went further up the slope uh, and visited the observatories, which was just awesome. Um, so it was, it's, it's really exciting. Um, the idea to actually test the rover was something we came up with, like in the, you know, in the eleventh oh. hour. Uh, <laughs> but the uh, the team okay. took it in good spirit. It was really, really fun. Um, yeah. As you can see, they like elated. Uh, it's like they're on the moon. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's cool. Oh, that's great. So we, yeah, so uh, that's um, that was great. Uh, as as part of that, we um, we went up to see the observatories. Um, I got a special exclusive uh, view inside because normally it's normal public cannot go inside the observatories. It's only for the operators and the astronomers. So uh, we got to do that. Hear about that daily lives and business. Yeah, here's here's a. <laughs> Close up of you can see the rocks. The rocks of because it was really really windy <laughs> up there. Um, Problems you don't and have. And that on. that cardboard lander would fly away if it wasn't <laughs> pinned down. Um, but we had we had a lot of fun uh, playing with that. Um, we also got to visit, uh, of course, some of the volcanoes and the they have some big craters and or calderas and it's called calderas, and. Um, visited the U.S. Uh, Geolog Geological Survey uh, Center. There's an observatory overlooking one of the cal uh, calderas because it's smoking. It's actually active, which was kind of scary too because they have they have poisonous gases there. You can't walk into the caldera. You can, you'll can die. Um, but we got an exclusive uh, presentation from, from one of the guys there uh, about the seismic activities and the volcano monitoring that they do 24-7. Um, we also visited the uh, Imelor uh, Center for Astronomy uh, in Hilo, mm -hmm. uh, which is in conjunction with the University of Hawaii, uh, which was uh, part of our hosts there in Hawaii. It was it was amazing. It was truly amazing um, and very relevant because that's where Hawaii is one of the places where the Apollo astronauts actually trained. Um, there's the Mars habitat on Mauna Loa where where people are actually training how to be isolated for months on end uh, to go to Mars. So it was exciting. Hmm. Very cool. Uh, we have a couple of questions. Um, Sylvan Westby yep. is asking about how do um, do teams get funded? For example, are there teams with private funding? Do they come from public schools? Does it matter uh, since you're sending them the kits if they're a finalist? Exactly. So. From 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 the inception, we did that it should be like no no purchase necessary experience. Uh, we wouldn't put the burden on 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 teams to to you know, dole out money to actually participate. It doesn't cost anything to participate. It's all free. Uh, but but the the whole concept is that for the finalist teams, those who make it into the last phase, will be given a free uh, uh, robotic set. Uh, to work from, 
And of course, the, the, the other incentives are that there are these prizes. That's a grand prize of a trip to somewhere in the, exciting in the world. Uh, you win other things. We've had uh, uh, registrations as, as prizes to uh, the first competitions mm -hmm. um, and other tidbits. Uh, so, um, again, I, I mentioned that some teams are already seasoned teams who've been uh, working uh, in the first competitions, for instance, uh, and other types of robotics competitions. They, in turn, have an experience with... with, with uh, What's it called? Doing fundraising because it's necessary for them to, to keep their teams going. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not something that we do with uh, for Moonbots because we do want to see rookie teams who have no experience. They don't uh, need to put any mon money into it if they if they thought it was. We have that question all the time if there's a fee to actually enter, but it's 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 free. So. I hope that answers the question. Yeah. Um, <laughs> is there a, is that taken into consideration when you're looking for finalists as well? Um, no. Um, we, we're judging we're judging all the the submissions and the activities that they've gone through in, in phase one, and it's it's primarily based on that. Um, you anything about them really? You just you're just judging it on the, the submissions. The, and we're also judging on you know. Uh, Various uh, open criteria like creativity um, and and you know what imagination they put into it, what effort they put into it. Uh, there are a lot of lot of it's it's um, we 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 do encourage the again I'm going to repeat it uh, that we do encourage rookie teams to be part of that, and we do want to see new teams uh, year by year. Um, and we have had a really nice, uh, what's it called, uh, flow of new teams coming in. Uh, and I, I truly, and I've said that again when I worked with the partners at Google and the XPRIZE Foundation uh, when we started this and said, I would really want to see those teams who have no experience join because they should have that opportunity mm -hmm. uh, because we know that a lot of veteran teams out there. And we've seen that. I really get a really kick, I get a kick out of seeing a team that says, we had Never heard about Lego Mindstorms before. We never heard about Moobots. We're new to this, but we want to be part of it. Cool. Uh, Guido Bibra, first of all, is very sad. There doesn't seem to be a lot of uh, teams in Germany where he is. So, Guido, go out and inspire kids. <laughs> <laughs> That's our task to you. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I actually have, uh, as one of the pictures I, I sent you, I shared with you, Nicole, is uh, sure. one I call Map of the Teams. Uh, it's a Google map that we have on the website. And I think um, if we look at that, we can kind of see where the, the spread is. I don't have that, but I can... I think it's like it looks like a screenshot of the website. Yeah, I don't see that, but I can oh, okay. screen share yeah. the website. So. Let's okay, that, that might help. If you look at the app, um, yeah, well, here you go. Right there, um, <laughs> you can see it's the world times time one and a half. Uh, but the actual the actual picture shows you where there are some blank spots out there in the world. You can't see if Germany is covered there, but we know that there are places in Europe uh, who are not covered. Uh, we have a couple of teams from Egypt, which is really really great. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a uh, nice constellation of teams from um, South America, Chile, Peru, and uh, Peru is not there this year, but we had uh, some interesting teams from Brazil too. We have representative from Tasmania and Australia, um, and we are working really, really hard to expand on this and to make this as global as possible. We could say, with, with truthfully, that we were on all continents except for Antarctica this year. Um, we have been, we have had teams from Greenland too. Uh, as you can see, there's a team from Alaska. It's it's something that everyone can participate in, and we are working really, really hard to expand it. And next year, uh, we hope to do more uh, of that even. So, yeah. hopefully, our friend from Germany can can help us uh, spread the word. I wonder if is there any correlation between Moonbots participants and countries that have um, Lunar X Prize teams? Interesting question. I don't know question. that. It was just and a thought. Yeah. Yes, there is. Um, 
we have we have seen uh, teams sprout in, for instance, India, where there's a team Indus from India. Mm -hmm. um, there is uh, South American teams that has had uh, like an offset in the Moonbots team, where where the kids either knew about the the, the local team. Um, the correlation was there between uh, the last year's winners, Grand Prize winners, Team Hungarobots from uh, Hungary. Uh, they were closely connected to Team Puli, which is the uh, local Hungarian uh, team uh, for the X Prize. Uh, so, so yes, um, for sure. But in general, I would say that that many teams uh, have, like, we, we have, as you can see from the map, there is like. Uh, prevalence or dominance in, the, in North America, and especially in the U.S., uh, primarily because there's also a, a majority of first Lego League and first Tech Challenge teams, mm -hmm. and also because we are partnering with First, they are spreading the word because mm -hmm. they see this as a very interesting off-season uh, activity for the teams. So, uh, in case for those who don't know, First Robotics is another type of robotics competition. I'm not as familiar with that one, but I've seen some of the teams that work at a, a maker fair we were at a few months ago, and they're like these robots throwing these gigantic balls around. I don't know if that's a typical first competition, uh, but that's another type of robotics competition that's pretty popular. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It was it was quite it was it was terrifying and uh, awesome to see. <laughs> I think they're pretty big. Robots are awesome. Robots are awesome. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, Guido also wants to know, has LEGO ever considered making models of the prize winners into official sets? Um, maybe you could tell us a little bit about uh, the, the sets and how they, the Mindstorm sets and how they work. So that's, that's, that is a good question, uh, mm -hmm. but, but no, um, we've, we've left it open for, for teams to share uh, whatever, you know, whatever designs and concepts they, they wanted to share. Uh, it's not been like from, from when I represented LEGO, it's not been LEGO's business to, to try and let's say capitalize on that. Um, so the LEGO Mindstorms kit is a all-in-one box uh, kit where you get a microcontroller, you get sensors, you get motors for inputs and outputs. You get a lot of LEGO Technic bricks so you can and wheels and and uh, gears. So you can actually build a robot. You get um, the software comes for free, mm -hmm. so you can program your robot and do whatever you want. Um, and it's been around for f 16 years now, so I should know <laughs> I've been there a little as long. Mm -hmm. So um, it's 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 been very successful in letting kids of all ages create whatever kind of robots they want, and there's been amazing, amazing robots made. Um, Lego Mindstorms robots have been in space, uh, in the space station, and 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 the stuff. So, uh, like, like no limits to what you can do. But to to Guido's question, it's not something that's been like an urge to 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 do that. Okay. Tell us a little about the programming that's involved with the Mindstorms, because I've I've played around a little bit, and I'm not a programmer at all, so I, it was not it was fairly easy to start doing programming the way it's laid out in the Mindstorms kits. Maybe you can explain that a little. Yeah. So um, it, it the, the software or the programming environment that you get is is a drag and drop graphical programming uh, mm -hmm. with. It's called uh, graphical blocks. Mm -hmm. um, so as you probably know, Jordi, or your experience with this, that you have different blocks that re represent commands. You have variables. You can add uh, your own math. You can make your robot do math um, <laughs> and do measurements, of course, with the sensors, but also there are sensors built in, like in the motors. So if you want to measure distance, you can do it by rotations, degrees, and, and other variables uh, and, and parameters. So... It is, it is targeted at ten-year-olds. Uh, so you know, you and I should be able to to, to <laughs> right. figure it out. Uh, there's also a lot of help, um, and there are tons of resources out there. Uh, I've been working with with users of all ages uh, when when I worked at Lego, um, and it was very inspirational because in the community around Lego Mindstorms, there's a lot of 
uh, self-governance where, where adults are teaching children and vice versa, mm. uh, where they, they are working with the graphical programming environment from Lego, but sometimes they expand to go somewhere else like text-based programming because it's the next step for them or the next natural uh, evolution to move on to learn something a little more complex. Yeah, it's a great first step. It's a great um, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to, I, we, we talked about this, but I wanted to, to go back to it, is the, the fact that they're not just remote controlled rovers, right? It's when you think of remote, you know, oh, let's rover, I can control it with my remote. You have to program it to be able to figure out what it's doing on its own. And I think that's a really key distinction between these Mindstorm kits and what you're asking in the Moonbots challenge versus like a remote control race car or helicopter. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about how that presents a challenge for the, the teams? Is hands off, it has to figure yeah. it out on its own. Ab absolutely. Um, I, I, would, I think I would go back to the basic that, that somebody taught me in 1998, when I started LEGO working on LEGO Mindstorms, where the philosophy was that if you wanted to like do the really basic uh, teaching for a child about how to do programming was try to be the robot yourself, mm -hmm. take pen and paper or pencil and paper, write down what it is you want to do. If you want to move from A to B, figure that out first. If you've got a motor with a, a set of wheels, uh, figure out that you get both sets of wheels to go in the right direction. So there is this very simple logical uh, process that you can go through by teaching the very basics. And you'll see that if you're ever trying like Mindstorms and many other DIY uh, uh, robotics toolkits like Lego Mindstorms that the simplest things you learn first is like make your robot make a sound, like, right? yeah. and then you put in a program block that says make a beep, and when you press a button, make a beep, and you you have a natural progression in uh, learning the, the steps, and you know at the end you can you can do some really complex programming, um, and because you can do that, because you can plan out how you want to go from A to C and 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 come back to to A. Um, the the uh, the whole idea is that we have to give them the challenge of it has to be autonomous. That robot has to actually run by its own because we know that you can make it do that. Um, uh, because otherwise, remote controlling, I would say, would kind of make it easy. Maybe I'm like a little biased when it comes to that. Yes, I love I love the autonomy of robots. I love that robots can do things by themselves because I or somebody else has put like programming and, and the, the logic into it. So you're teaching you're teaching. So I, I hope that algorithms. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh sorry, was that was there a question or No, I was just mentioning that you're teaching algorithms more so than programming, I mean, or, or you're teaching that in addition to programming. Abs absolutely. Um, it, it, I have to say, to, to, to make a connection to what we've been seeing from, from the, the teams uh, participating in Moonbots, that some teams have gone beyond uh, the, just the basics. Uh, we, we've seen teams that, as part of their their uh, exercise and outreach created a website that had a, a, a control function so you can remote control their robot from wherever you were in the world. Mm -hmm. um, I love that concept. I love that people are doing that. Um, there are those who are breaking the mold saying, well, there's this very well simple software programming environment coming from Lego, but we want something more hardcore mm -hmm. like text-based programming. Um, so yes, there is we do see that we have, uh, we are aspiring to 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 help uh, the the students out there learn more about programming uh, because it should not be scary. Uh, we should all have like a basic understanding of it for sure. Yeah, that's something that's being pushed for a lot harder these days is a basic understanding of, of coding and programming and algorithms in everybody because we're all using these devices in front of us, uh, and that's what's at the heart of it. Yep. So it's it's good for jobs, but it's also good for just understanding technology. Um, I wonder Absolutely. about um, 
uh, our our team here at Cosmo Quest uh, is a large percentage women. Do you, so we were, we want to ask the question if uh, you see a lot of girls participating in these projects as well, and um, what kind of impact that might. Be yeah, um, I, I'm I'm happy to say I, I think if you, if you if you pull up one of the pictures, I had two pictures called girls. Um, girls team. Yeah. Um, and it's just to take my ugly mug off the screen. Um, <laughs> but this is this is Team uh, Artemis Rising from uh, from uh, Michigan. I love that um, name. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, absolutely, it's 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 great. They they were part of the 25 uh, top teams in in the finals here. Uh, right under that picture, we have the, uh, the girls' robot squad united from uh, from Tasmania, not Australia, Tasmania. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And and we, we we again love to see all girls teams because we know there is this understanding that it's not for girls. There is a bias, um, but what we've seen uh, that the composition of girls versus boys or males versus females in in Moonbots is that this year we uh, achieved in total 36% of the teams uh, were girls, mm -hmm. or not all girls, but Conversation was there was like the seventy-four uh, percent boys and and thirty and uh, uh, girls. Um, in the finals, there was a different conversation because actually seventy percent of the team members were actually girls in the uh, the mm -hmm. finalist teams, uh, which was great. So we definitely working really really hard to encourage that even more, and do want to leverage. The knowledge we've gained over the years, because we've seen a progression that more more girl teams uh, and all girls teams have been involved. You you can draw the parallel again to the first robotics uh, competition because they also do the same thing that they want to uh, encourage uh, more girls to participate. Uh, so for sure, um, it's it's I know it's it's it is there's a big drive to to make more girls join up as scientists, engineers, uh, coders, and programmers. So so we are on the same uh, wagon right there. Um, and I wanted to show uh, what is, I want to know what's going on in this picture here with the the picture of the moon and the. Hang on a sec. I would like to know what's going on here in this picture. You've got a picture right. Okay. Moon, so. But... Yeah. Well, the, the best the best way of showing uh, what the competition is all about is by showing what a team has done because. Um, the only well, there's a couple of components here that, of course, came from. This is one of the finest teams, the Wolves, uh, also from the U.S. Um, that we gave them the building blocks, the Lego elements to build whatever they wanted to build. But we also gave them, gave them building instructions based on the designs that we gave them in 2012. We said, here are some designs. You can build some of these mission items. Some of the mission items are uh, obligatory, like the landing base that you see in the top right corner. Um, the crater uh, in the middle of the picture was something that, that also uh, was per our design. But the, the teams, again, were free to build whatever they wanted to. Um, but here a team has taken the, the, the opportunity to build other, I can see other mission items that were not designed by, by us in any way. Um, and they, as because the, the the challenge was, you have to design your own mission and own gameplay. You you have to decide what you want your robot to do, mm -hmm. uh, with only a base a few basic criteria like get off the landing base uh, to start with. Um, and of course, the the big mat is something that we printed and sent out uh, to them, emulating the moon. So um, that that is like one of the many designs that the finalist teams uh, came up with. Um, I think if we go to the picture right under that, the competition two, I really like this story because this is uh, Team uh, Megabots uh, Votu from uh, Brazil. Mm -hmm. um, they're showing off their game design, uh, but we have a couple of other pictures because I really like one of this. It's one of many stories, but this story in particular uh, really got to us. We uh, posted about it on Facebook. Um, if you scroll down, there should be... Um, the picture called Megabots Votu, oh, and yes. here we go. Yeah, yeah, which is pretty much the same, but this is actually um, a different situation. So what Megabots Votu did um, after they had performed in uh, the Moonbots competition was 
they donated everything they had received, uh, the playmat, the robot, everything, all the bricks, to a, um, to a home that is looking after socially vulnerable children mm. in the area, plus three of the team members dedicated time to go there to, uh, to this uh, house to, to teach the kids programming and all about robots. Um, and I, I find that amazing that they they have the that they have this 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 uh, th that they're doing this for others. Uh, we we see a lot of that. This is just one example, but it really gets me that uh, they are so gracious. Um, and um, we we it's it's one of those. Ex I wanted to draw out this example because it's it's great to see this kind of outreach. That's so cool. They're paying it forward already. It's amazing. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. That's that's exactly it, and that's what they're doing. And um, it's it's we're deeply appreciating those kind of things. It's not part of the mission. It's it's going beyond the Call of Duty. Okay. That's wonderful. Wow. So, what do you guys have lined up for 2015? What do um, potential teams have to look? What, what should they be looking for for next year's competition? Well, they should um, look out for news on our Facebook profile uh, on moonbots.org. Um, I cannot say what we're going to do next year. Sure, sure. Other than we uh, actually we just talked about it a few days ago. It's um, going to be very exciting. We have a lot of grand plans and um, great ideas. Um, and we are hoping to have an even better, uh, a bigger field, not better, but bigger field of, of teams signing up for sure. Um, so yeah, these were the old dates from, from last year's okay. or this year's competition, so they don't really count. Um, it's but not I, up on the website close, yet. maybe? Like those What's should, that? It's, it's probably close though. They should start looking at the beginning of the year. We, I would, okay, so actually, this is a teaser. Right now, in this conversation, it's actually the first time and I'm speaking about you know, what we're doing, or what, not what we're doing, but that we're doing something next year. Sure. <laughs> um, so it's, it's definitely something to look out for, um, for everyone who is engaged, interested. Uh, we will be posting very soon. We usually launch the Moonbots competition in, in springtime. Okay. So um, right. we will we will soon be you're starting to talk about it for, for sure uh, within the next few months. So subscribe to the Facebook for sure. <laughs> subscribe or like Absolutely. the Facebook. Absolutely. Uh, we will be on Google Plus, Twitter, uh, Facebook, uh, and our website moonbots.org. And do you have any advice for new teams who will be thinking about their submissions? You know, any any advice for for them? I would encourage them to read about the Google Next Prize to start with, uh, because that's where it all originated from. Mm. And going backwards, I would uh, encourage them to look at what other teams have done with many videos we see on YouTube. Mm. Um, some of the designs that they're presenting, possibly contacting teams, checking their websites and Facebook profiles, because many of them do have that. Um, in general, have that learning about lunar exploration because there's a lot of activities happening around it right now. Mm -hmm. um, and I would say don't be scared mm -hmm. about learning about new things um, because we're definitely trying to encourage them to just jump into it with with an open mind um, and be excited about it because we are we focused on, on, on letting all these these young people be as creative and imaginary as they can possibly be. So uh, for adults like me who are too old, unfortunately, to enter the Moonbots X Prize, or sorry, the Moonbots competition, mm -hmm. uh, do you have advice for, for adults who might want to mentor a team or help, help a, a group near them? Absolutely. Um, see, I worked with a lot of children and, and, and adults and adult users of, of LEGO and LEGO Mindstorms over many, many years, uh, but I haven't had any experience in mentoring a, a robotics team ever mm -hmm. as such. Uh, I've only been in dialogue with them, 
But I would encourage you as an adult to take a back seat position um, and try to inspire uh, the the young ones to do their own research, um, to make new mistakes, uh, to go through a trial and error process of, of trying to learn. And we've seen a lot of that uh, in, in Moonbudge, which is great. They're showing the signs and said, all these things failed and we found a solution. It's mm -hmm. I would encourage, I would ask you to encourage them to not give up um, and definitely also get very excited about it for sure uh, because it is indeed exciting to think to actually emulate putting a robot on the moon. Uh, so yeah. yeah. And I hope without saying too much that what we want to do next year will make it so much easier for everybody. Excellent. Uh, and have more, more fun, more exciting. <laughs> so. Yeah, you got to be hands off. I, I just uh, the class I'm teaching just wrapped up their design projects, and you know I'm helping them out, and I'm like I can't touch. I have to let them break <laughs> it and do things, and it's it's hard sometimes. I got to go yeah. build my own to like satisfy that. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. But it's really great advice, though. Really good thing to think about. Yeah. Can I ask you one more personal question? How yeah, awesome absolutely. is it to work for Lego? Like, <laughs> um, I had a dream job for ten years. Uh, my first few days at Lego was was being in paradise. Like everybody would go through that because I started in the design department, and there are more Lego than you could possibly imagine. Oh Lego bricks and models that never see the daylight because personal projects for some designers. It's it is it is an awesome place. Um, and, and a lot of fun for sure. And I would say I had the ultimate job because I worked with the robotics part, which was like the mm. the cool new thing back then when I started. Uh, it's, it's still very cool, uh, but I also have enjoyed that I've gotten to, to work with another passion, which is uh, space exploration, mm. uh, and been trying some, some cool stuff uh, as part of that. So I'm happy about it for sure. Awesome, awesome. Sorry, I had to ask that because that just seems. <laughs> sure. We all love Lego. My usual, my usual, my usual answer is that if, if if we're getting paid in Lego, yeah, we're getting paid as much as you can eat. Uh, so, <laughs> so yeah, for sure. So I just wanted to show uh, the logo that you sent over with the website. So moonbots.org is the place to get all your information. Make sure you check them uh, out on social media so you can get all the yep. updates. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like your little your little robot guy. That's very cute. <laughs> <laughs> It's very Wally-esque. Yeah. I know, <laughs> searching for something on the moon. Yes. Okay, awesome. Um, so thank you so much for joining us, and, and thank you everybody for sticking with us despite <laughs> all the technology, beam technology. Uh, <laughs> I know, but we don't give up either. It's all about persistence. <laughs> Keep going. Right. For the most part, for the most part. Uh, yeah. So, uh, as you guys may have seen in the comment thread, learning space is is going to be changing and and a little bit for 2015. Uh, one of the changes we're going to start with next week is I will not be broadcasting from my channel anymore. There's actually a learning space YouTube channel and Google Plus page, mm -hmm. and so. Um, Starting next week, I'll be using that. I did create events on the CosmoQuest page for the last few for this year, since that's where everyone's used to going. Um, but we're going to be switching over to the Learning Space page and channel for good for 2015. Uh, we've got lots of stuff coming up for next year, which I will talk about on our Christmas Eve episode, uh, where I will probably be wearing a Santa hat being silly. Uh, but <laughs> next week, we'll have a real episode. Uh, we'll have Sarah Mitchell uh, talking to us about uh, family science at NASA. Uh, and then you've got the Weekly Space Hangout on Friday at noon Pacific, where, where uh, Fraser Kane and crew will be... Uh, wrapping up the space news for the week. I'm going to try and make it if my grading is done by then. Uh, and then Monday, uh, Fraser and Pamela are continuing their um, Modern Women of Astronomy series. Uh, and then Tuesday, uh, Pamela is hosting a Google Lunar X Prize hangout with, uh, I think, Team Italia. Uh, so check that out on Tuesday. We've uh, It'll be in the newsletter that goes out tonight um, if you're subscribed to the CosmoQuest newsletter. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. Do you guys have anything last minute to announce or inspirational anything? Um, no, not for me. 
Thank you so much, Stephen, okay. for joining us. Yeah, thank, thank you. you for having me. Thank you. Awesome. We'll see you guys next week. All right. All right, then. Bye.